Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, I will be discussing today's Infosys DSC interview experience. This interview happened today only, that is on 7th May 2022. So guys, make sure that you watch this video till the end and do not skip any of the questions which were asked in this interview. As previously also, I have uploaded many interview experiences for Infosys for all the roles that is SC, DSC as well as SP role. All those interview experiences you can find under this playlist. I will give you the link of this playlist in the i button or in the description box. Make sure to visit this playlist and see for the videos so that you can get help from them and you can prepare for your interviews. And guys, one more thing. Recently only I have started taking mock interviews for Infosys profiles. You can see here we are taking uh, mock interviews for Infosys SC profile, DSC profile, TCS COVID interviews are also going on. So we are taking mock interviews for all these profiles. So if you are not confident about your interview preparation, so you can book your slot with us. We will be giving you guidance that how you can uh, prepare well and whatever after taking the mock interviews, we will be telling you what are what were your good points and how you can improve on them in your actual interviews. So guys, you can book your slot. The links will be given in the description box. Make sure to visit this link and book your slot as soon as possible because slots are limited and they are filling very fast. So guys, now let's start this video and before starting the video, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel. Okay, so guys, the date of the interview was 7th May 2022, that is today only. The profile for which this interview was, was the DSC profile, that is 6.25 LPA package. The branch of my friend was CSC. The duration of the entire interview was 35 minutes. Okay, so the first question, as you all know, will be, tell me about yourself. And guys, this is very important question as per your interview is concerned, because by this answer only, the interviewer will get to know about you and he will be asking questions related to, related to the things that you have mentioned here. So kindly prepare this question very well. You can include your projects, your internships, your skills, your extracurricular curricular activities. All these things you can include here. But please prepare this question very well. Okay. So moving to the next question. Next question was that the interviewer asked my friend to share the screen and write the code for two questions were given. First question was to find the nth Fibonacci element given 0 and 1 as starting elements. So guys, again, it is a very basic coding question that can be asked from you in the interview. I will give you the link of this question in the description box. If you wish to visit it, you can simply visit it. Okay. So the first question was to find the nth Fibonacci element. Next code coding question was swap two numbers without using the third variable. So I would not say that this is a coding question, but again, it is a very important question as per the interview is concerned because many times this question gets repeated. That is, you have to swap two numbers without using the third variable. So here is the solution for you. You can simply take the screenshot for the same. Okay. Now on to the next question. Next question is what is the difference between arrays and linked list? So the major difference between array and linked list is array elements to elements are stored in the contiguous memory location. Like if one element one is stored here, then second element will be stored uh, right be right uh, ahead of one like this. The elements will be stored. But this uh, the, this is not the case with linked list. We do not know in linked list the two elements are stored. One is stored at one location and another one will be stored at any other location in the memory. So how we can how we can find the next element in linked list? See in a linked list. Uh, in a linked list, there is a node which consists of two parts. One is the data, that is the data that that node will contain, and next part is the address node, that is the address of the next node. This is a link. This is how linked list works. So one node will be there, data will be there in the node, and address of the next node will be there in the current node. So this is how linked list works. Whereas in arrays, the elements are stored in the contiguous memory location, that is one after the other. So this is the major difference between array and linked list. And another another difference is that Array works with a static memory, whereas linked list works with a dynamic memory. Array elements are independent of each other. That is, this uh, third element is not dependent on the second element. But in linked list, the array, uh, the elements are dependent on each other. That is, the third element is dependent on the second element. How? Because the second element will contain the address of the third element. Therefore, they are dependent on each other. So I hope now the difference between array and linked list are clear to you. Okay. Next question is, what is a DQ? So yes, DQ is nothing. DQ, you can say DQ, the full form of DQ is double ended queue. It is a generalized version of a queue data structure that allows insert and delete at both ends. Now we all know that a normal queue uh, allows the insertion from the end and uh, and allows the deletion uh, from the first, that is FIFO, first in, first out. 
insertion from end and deletion from beginning this is a normal queue but a dq is a generalized version of a queue that it allows the deletion as well as addition from both the ends so from front also you can add and delete and from back also you can add and delete the element so i hope now this particular this particular data structure is clear to you okay next question was what is the real life application of dq so guys in previous videos also i have told you that the data structures and the real life application are very important for all the data structures you must know at least two of the real life applications of that data structure for this particular purpose i have made a dedicated video on my channel in which i have discussed the real life application of different data structures you can watch that video after watching this video i will give you the video link in the i button or in the description box make sure to visit it and what is the real life application of dq again this question is depend uh, this question i will leave it to you please write in the comment section that what are, what do you think is the real life application of dq so do comment your answer in the comment section below so i hope this question is also clear to you and guys if you have not liked the video till now please like it and please subscribe this channel because more such videos will be coming your way okay next question was which language you prefer so my friend said c++ so guys again i want to remind you that we have started taking mock interviews for dsc profile as well as for the sc profile of infosys if you are not confident about your preparation do book your slot we will take the mock interview with you and we will tell you about the good points and the bad points about your interview and how you can improve them in your actual interviews the slots are limited go book your slot right now the links are in the description box okay now so my friend said that he <clears throat> uh, he preferred c++ language the next question was what are different types of access specifiers <clears throat> so guys there are three major access specifiers one is public then is protected next is private now again i have made a dedicated video on this question in which i have discussed each and every access specifier in detail with the help of code so do watch that video if you want to learn more the uh, the video link you will again find in the i button or in the description box make sure to visit it okay next question was what is the difference between method overloading and method overriding so guys again if you are watching my previous videos also then you can see that this is a very commonly asked question in infosys now the difference between method overloading overloading and method overriding so first we will discuss what is method overloading so method overloading means that in this in a particular class there will be two or more functions which is with the same name but different type of arguments this is method overloading that is there will be two to three functions with the same name but different type of arguments okay next is method overriding what does method override do let's just suppose we have two classes one is a parent class another one is the child class in parent class we have a function that is doing certain things now what we have to do in child class we have to again in the child class we again have to declare that function with the same name with the same number of arguments but with the different uh, different functionality so this is known as method overriding that is we are providing we are providing the specific implementation of the method that is already provided by its super class or you can say by its parent class so i hope now the method overloading and method overriding is clear to you method overloading uh, is performed within the class whereas method overriding is performed within two classes so i hope now the difference is clear to you okay next question is what is a friend function so as again for this friend function it is a very uh, easy topic but a big topic so again i will give you the link in the description box wherein you can read about the friend function as well as about the friend class okay now moving to the next question are you comfortable with sql so guys you are giving dsc interviews so you must be comfortable with oops concept with the sql concepts all these concepts you must be familiar with so my friend said yes that he was comfortable with sql okay next question uh, was what is the difference between ddl and dml commands so first of all what is the uh, def, uh, what is the full form of ddl command that is data definition language and dml command it stands for data manipulation language now ddl commands are used to create database schema and can be used to define some constraints as well now let's just suppose ddl commands are used where we have to change the layout of the schema let's just suppose we have a table and now we have to insert a new column in a table then we'll use a ddl command again if we have a particular table and we have to add a constraint to a particular column then again we will use a ddl command so ddl commands change the way we look at the schema whereas dml commands are used to simply add the data inside the table retrieve the data from the table and update or delete the data from the table 
so i hope now the difference between detail and dml commands are clear to you now <clears throat> the uh, examples of detail commands are create drop rename alter whereas the uh, examples of dml commands are update insert and uh, delete so again i am telling you whenever we have to change the look of the schema we use detail commands but whenever we have to insert delete or update the data inside the table then we will use the dml commands so i hope this question is also clear to you okay now moving to the next question what is the difference between truncate and drop command so as before knowing the difference you must know a one similarity that both truncate as well as drop command is the dtl command now what is the difference between this truncate and drop command now the drop command is used to remove table definition and its content whereas the truncate command is used to delete all the rows from the table let's just suppose let's just suppose we have a table we have a table and we have a data inside a table now when we will use the truncate command all the data inside the table will get deleted but the schema of that table will remain that is that table will now remain as an empty table inside the database but whenever we use a drop command all the all the data that is present inside that table will be deleted plus the schema also plus the table will also get deleted that is name of the table the schema of the table will also get deleted so this is the major difference between drop and truncate command in truncate command in truncate command only the data inside the table gets deleted but the schema remains but in drop command the uh, data of the table gets deleted plus the schema also of that table gets deleted so i hope this question is also clear to you now uh, another difference is that uh, in drop command table space is freed from memory because the table schema is also get deleted whereas in truncate command only the rows of the tables are getting deleted and the schema is not getting deleted so the table memory is not freed so i hope this question is also clear to you okay next question was write a query for updating the table so again for your example for your convenience i have written this example you can simply take this screenshot for the same the syntax is update table name set the values that you have to set for different columns where condition is used that on which row you have to perform the update update query so i hope this particular question is also clear to you now the last question of this interview was where do you see yourself after 5 years so again this question is completely dependent on you that what are your achievements what are your goals in your life and how what you want to achieve so again it is dependent on you only that how you will answer this question and if you are not sure about how to answer this question you can simply google it and simply see there are many sample answers available on internet so guys these were all the questions which were asked in this particular interview and if you want to see more such videos please like this video comment down that yes you want more such videos and if you are again if you are not confident about your interview preparation then you can simply come to us and give the mock interviews we will tell you specifically that where you went wrong and what were the good points in your uh, interview and what were the bad points and it will really be helpful for you to perform good in the actual interviews and again if you will come on top mate where you will book your slots you can see that there are a lot of testimonials that are given here they describe that yes we are really taking this work very seriously and we are giving good feedback to the people so i hope this thing is clear to you and please book your slot as soon as possible these are limited slots so guys this was it for this video thank you for watching this video and subscribe this channel for more such videos